Hey guys, I'm back again with another video and this time around I'm going to be making a white sucker themed glide bait. And I've wanted to make a sucker themed anything for the longest time now, but for some reason I just never got around to making one. Until now. And as you can see this is a fairly big lure. Uh, this is going to be 27.5 centimeters long, so the target species for such a big bait is going to be obviously pike or musky. Also, what I wanted to do with this project is I wanted to make this look as realistic as I possibly can. And I think I got fairly close to my goal. But um, I hope you guys will enjoy this video. Like the video if you did. Subscribe to the channel for more content like this. And also you can support me on Patreon nowadays if you want. Okay, enough of that. Let's uh, just jump right into it and I'm going to be showing you how to make this thing. The type of wood that I chose for this project is going to be maple. And I'm fairly familiar with maple and even though it's really hard and tough to carve, I just feel more comfortable with this type of wood, uh, with the type of uh, carving that I tend to do and the style I use. I'm going to be able to get a lot of nice, small, crisp details with um, minimum effort. Uh, although there is going to be a lot of <laughs> carving involved later on, but that's just beside the point. I guess everything is relative. But anyways, uh, I'm just going to start off by tracing out the outlines of this uh, soccer, and then we're gonna head out to the bandsaw and cut it out. Since I'm kind of uh, aiming for realism with this lure, I'm going to actually uh, join these two halves together that I cut to get me a little bit more meat to work with. Uh, because uh, suckers tend to be kind of um, more rounder, I guess, uh, would be the right term to say here. Um, I mean, they're kind of oval uh, with their cross section, but uh, anyways, I feel like I'm going to start rambling again. Anyways, I'm just going to glue these two together with 5-minute uh, epoxy. Now that the epoxy has cured, I'm just going to take a little bit out from the profile and sand everything nice and smooth with my belt sander. Next thing I'm going to start uh, shaping the upper profile, but before I can cut anything I need to mark it down and I made this uh, stencil to help me out uh, with that. So this lure is still kind of a block, so I figured it would be a good time to drill the pilot's holes for the eye sockets that I will be uh, drilling onto the lure later on. And I'm just going to use my drill press to do the job. Next I'm going to go to the bandsaw again and cut the slot for the uh, back lip that I'm going to be attaching to this uh, lure. And uh, by the way, th for those who don't know, uh, this back lip is there to supposed to help with the gliding action and also stabilize the glide a little bit. But um, yeah, after that I'm just going to cut the upper profile with the bandsaw as well.
Alrighty, I'm done with the bandsaw cutting now and it's time to head out to the uh, belt slash disc sander to sand everything nice and smooth. And I usually tend to keep a little bit of extra here so that I have something to sand off. Obviously it's way easier to do that than adding something in later on. Although technically you could do that, but um, it's a pain in the ass and uh, ain't nobody got a time for that. Next I'm gonna start rounding off the uh, profile. And I decided that the easiest and fastest way to do this would be to just use my disc sander and just tilt the, uh, the table to 45 degree angle. And that's exactly what I did. I continued hogging off material with my belt sander. And unfortunately I completely forgot to film the next portion or next segment of this uh, making process and that would have been using my knife to profile the shape even further. But maybe that's not uh, such a huge or crucial thing to see and instead you're just gonna see me finishing everything off with a piece of sandpaper. Which by the way was uh, grid 60. Before moving into carving the details, I'm just going to drill out the eye sockets at this point because obviously it makes more sense to me to do it at this point where I can use the eye socket to kind of align everything. You already know about this if you've seen any of my other videos. Alright, next we're gonna carve the bejesus out of this thing and make this thing come alive. And what I usually do is I use the the, the stencils that I uh, sketch for this uh, project or any kind of project uh, for that matter. And I'm just gonna use that to help me align all of the details more accurately. But yeah, this is a fairly straightforward process, really. I mean, I've been doing this for so long that it's kind of like second nature to me at this point. And I'm sure that there's few people out there who might see this and think that it's a, it's a bit daunting to go through all of this to uh, be able to carve out some details. But um, I think this is the easiest and most accurate way to do it is. So basically what you just do is you slap on the stencil on the other side, trace it out and just match it on the other side and repeat the process as many times as you need to. I usually don't do this, but um, it was uh, about time to whip out the good old Dremel and uh, use it for help me carving out some of the details, like this mouth right here. Alrighty, now I'm gonna start carving out the head details. And what I usually do is I cut along the sketch line first, and then I'm just gonna go behind the line and cut out the detail, whatever it might be. And also, uh, one little trick that I use a lot nowadays is that after I've um, cut all along the um, sketch lines, I'm gonna take an eraser and I'm going to basically try to erase everything out. What this does, it uh, forces all of the graphite from the pen to go into the grooves and making them more visible for me.
Once I was happy with the head details and how they turned out, uh, I'm just going to smooth everything out and get rid of all of those uh, carving marks that uh, might be there. And I'm just using these uh, special uh, sanding tools, I guess you could call them. Um, they're just basically pieces of wood that I've uh, glued some sandpaper on. I jumped ahead a little bit and already carved the fins and if you want to see how those are made maybe you can go and check out some of my older videos where that's been shown already uh, anyways what i'm going to do next i'm going to start carving out the scales and what i need to do first is mark out where they uh, need to start and i'm actually going to use the lateral line as the starting point so what i'm going to do now i'm going to mark in five minute uh, five millimeter increments a spot that i will then use to help me align the scales with this um, special stencil that i made specifically for this job now that i have the scale marks um, pointing into one direction, I'm just going to flip my stencil the other way around so I can start making this grid pattern. Even though this uh, scale stencil has its uh, benefits, it also has its limits. So I can't actually go around the bait with this uh, stencil and make everything look nice and um, accurate. So I'm actually going to have to connect all of these um, lines by hand. Next I'm going to draw the shape of the scales into the grid pattern and this is just to help me visualize how everything is going to look before I actually start carving out the scales. Now that I have all the scales marked, I can start carving them out. And the process for that is exactly the same as it was with the head details. So I'm not really going to talk too much about that. But um, sometimes when you start a big project like this and you look at the lure and you go like, oh my god, what, what did I get myself to, into again? And a really good thing to kind of like combat that sort of mental block is... I, what I usually just do is I, I make a couple of rows, go and do something else, and then come back and repeat the process. And also uh, having some good music um, playing in the background while you, while you do this uh, also helps a lot. Since my goal with this uh, lure was to achieve a level of realism that I don't see too often, to be honest, um, I'm going to add a few more details here to make it hopefully stand out a little bit more. So first things first, I'm going to um, make holes for the lateral line and after that I'm going to make nostrils. Next I'm going to start adding the hardware and I'm going to make some holes for the uh, screw eyes that I'm going to be using for this uh, particular lure. To make sure that the uh, screw eyes won't come loose at any point, I'm going to glue them in with 5 minute epoxy.
now that I have all the hardware in, I can start sealing the, the lure. And I can't really use um, epoxy here because obviously I want all of the details to show. So I'm just going to use a spray lacquer on this one. While the lacquer is curing, I'm going to cut the back lip for my lure. And I'm using 3mm thick um, Lexan polycarbonate sheet for this. And you also might be wondering why do I have that little hole in the back end there. And that is there just to have some sort of attachment point later on to um, attach it to my lure turner when I do the epoxying. Uh, also, I think I should mention that I actually put six layers of this lacquer onto this uh, lure. Um, I'm sure that there's going to be someone out there who's going to be asking me that question. Before I'm going to be weighing this bait, I need to make sure that I have everything um, already attached to this lure. So that means I need to attach the back lip as well. So I'm just going to use 5 minute epoxy to make sure that it's secured. I'm not going to talk too much about the weighing process um, of a glide bait because I have a separate video regarding that. So I'm going to link that in the description box. If you're curious, you can go and check that out. I just wanted to show you guys what it looks like. Now that I have the weight placement for this lure mapped out, I'm just going to drill a couple of holes to accommodate these weights. Next I'm going to seal the drill holes, and I'm just going to use Bondo for that. So I'm sure that after seeing me using Bondo, there's going to be at least one person out there who's going to go like, Why don't you use Spanky Soda and Shipback Room? Well, as you can see, um, Bondo is way easier to just shave off and also it's going to be way more economical in the long run. Before I can start painting this uh, sucker, I'm going to actually pin the, um, the back clip with a screw. I kind of could have done this uh, earlier when I, uh, before I uh, did the lacquering, but I kind of forgot to be honest. <laughs> Uh, so I'm just literally going to drill a hole and put a screw in to have some sort of mechanical connection there so that this lip is definitely not going to come off. Okay, finally we can start painting, and I'm gonna start off by laying a layer of um, silvery chrome. And um, these suckers t tend to have kind of like a silvery main color, but then you might see some other uh, colors in them as well, like for example brass, uh, and some of them even have a hint of, um, of copper in them too, which is very interesting. But let's not get ahead of ourselves. I recently got some new paints to my arsenal and I haven't painted with Createx colors for the longest time now. I think last time I used uh, Createx was like probably 15 years ago and I didn't like them. But it seems like they've uh, gotten better over time. So what I'm going to do now is I'm going to lay a layer of, um, of uh, uh, pearlized white on the belly.
I mentioned that some of these soccer species have hints of other colors in them too, so I just wanted to incorporate that into my soccer as well. So I'm just going to lay a layer of um, this bright brass on the flank of this soccer. And I'm just going to try to spray it as finely as I can, so there's, it's not going to be overpowering the look. At this point I'm going to highlight the scales themselves and I'm using this very dark Russian brown to basically do a black wash. Um, so I'm just going to spray it all over the bait and wipe it off. And the excess paint is going to be left in the grooves thus giving me that highlighted effect. When doing this kind of black wash technique with an airbrush, time is of the essence and you want to get rid of that paint as soon as possible because this uh, acrylic paint really sticks well. And what I do here is I basically just use um, airbrush cleaner to help me get rid of uh, the excess paint on top of the scales. Next I decided to tackle the head details and from all of the photos that I've seen of suckers, a lot of them seem to have this kind of like a yellowish tinge to the lower part of their um, jaw or uh, gills. Um, so that's what I'm going to do now. As a base for the head details and the gills, I decided to spray a little bit of uh, silver here. And, you know, you can't really go wrong with this, because obviously it looks pretty close to what the, the flank is as well, so it kind of like ties them together. Next color is going to be uh, that bright brass that I already used on the flank. And again, this is just to tie these two uh, parts together a little bit more. So in the very beginning I already knew that I had to change my painting technique from what I usually do to, to be something a bit more hands-on. So I decided to uh, use a lot more this hand painting technique uh, with a sponge and basically distribute different tones around the body to make it look a bit more realistic. I mean, I think I would have been able to make a pretty decent looking sucker pattern with just using my airbrush, but I don't think I would have been able to make it look realistic. And I think the difficulty with this technique uh, in particular is that you tend to do too much. So I try to consciously um, uh, try to make myself not paint too much with the same color and uh, basically just uh, uh, jump between different tones and try to mix everything together in a realistic manner, which is pretty challenging to say the least. To tie together all the sponge work I did previously, I'm going to use a stippling technique with my airbrush and basically paint dots all over this uh, gill plate to tie everything together and make it look a bit more cohesive with burnt umber. I'm pretty much done with the head details now and I'm going to move on to the mouth and I'm going to spray uh, a layer around the uh, high points of the mouth, which kind of looks like a 
plastic surgeon's dream. Uh, I mean, talk about puffy lips. Jeez, this is like a Botox overdose. In order to highlight these Botox lips even further, I'm going to paint a ring that goes around the lips with pink. And since I was uh, playing with that pink color, I'm just going to add it into a few other places around the head to make them pop a little bit more. Since I was highlighting some details around the head with other colors like pink, I decided that it might be a good idea to uh, add some white in there too, to make the gills pop a little bit more. There's only a few more things to do and Next I'm going to do the fin uh, details and I wanted to mask the whole area with tape because usually uh, what I would do is I would make a stencil that I would just uh, tape on like um, the type that I would be able to just uh, change between different lures uh, fast but this time around I didn't feel like I had any need for that because this is just a one-off so I just decided to use some masking tape. When looking at photos of different species of suckers, I noticed that there's actually a lot of variation between the colors that they have on their fins. So what I decided to do is just go what felt right to me. So what I'm going to do now is I'm going to lay a layer of um, this gory red in the background. This next step is something that I wouldn't normally do, but for this time around I just wanted to try it and see what it would look like. Uh, like normally I would just spray from a different angle and let the, um, the carved fin rays uh, sort of fan out the, the hue that is coming from them and make them pop, but this time around I just wanted to use a stencil to, um, to paint. And that's exactly what I did. And I think I kind of like this look. Um, yeah, I'm not sure if I'm going to do this in the future, but who knows. Now that I'm almost done with the uh, paint job, I'm actually going to give this uh, sucker an STD and make it look diseased. No, I'm just kidding. Um, this is supposed to imitate um, this spawning look that uh, the soccer and actually a lot of different species get these kind of like small bumps either around their head or in their lips like in the sucker's case. All right before I can epoxy this uh, sucker I'm going to glue in some eyes and shockingly I'm using five minute epoxy again. And finally, I'm going to encase this whole thing with epoxy multiple times. And again, I'm still using uh, True Coat Epoxy. Um, it's pretty easy to find from the internet if you want to go out and find this for yourself. Just use Google. It's the first thing that pops up. <laughs> Apparently, some people have a hard time finding this. I can't imagine why. Anyways, um, yeah, it's still the best epoxy that I've used and I'm still gonna continue using this until I find something better, I guess.
Now that the glide bait is done, there is only one thing to do, and that is to show you guys how it swims. And unfortunately, yes, I know this is way too small. Um, my top is kind of, well, I wish it was like two times as big as it is, but what can you do? I hope you guys enjoyed the video. Um, you can follow me on various social medias if you want. Um, I'm fairly active on Instagram and also on Facebook. Um, but yeah, that's all from me now. Hope you guys learned something new and I'll see you guys in the next one.